Our final scene for this act is from Vanya, Sonia, Masha, and Spike by Christopher Durant. Early one morning in their home in Bucks County, Vanya and Sonia, played by Eric Zabatsky and Sarah Gagarin, respectively, uh, settle in for their daily morning routine. Yes, but you weren't available. I'm afraid I like the other cup better. <laughs> well, it's the same with coffee. Well, yes, but maybe I put in more milk than you did. Maybe that's why it tastes better. Don't I usually put in the right amount of milk? Oh, well, yes, but I don't, don't usually think about it. Listen, it was just that... I was drinking one cup of coffee, and I was liking it. And suddenly, there's this whole different cup of coffee, and I was liking it slightly less. It's no big deal. It's only making pleasant conversation. That is not pleasant conversation. It is first thing in the morning, and you're saying that I don't do anything right! <laughs> I didn't say that. Yes, you did! I didn't. Well, you implied it then. Forget it. The coffee's delicious. No, no, it's not all that different. I shouldn't have said anything. I mean, I have two pleasant moments every day in my fucking life. <laughs> One of them is bringing you your coffee. Sonia, the two cups are almost identical. I should have said nothing. I'm sorry. Really. <laughs> What is the matter with you? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> but you threw the fucking coffee against the wall. I did it! You did? What kind of idiot response is that? I don't know. A, I hate you and I hate my life response. Well, it was effective then. Good for you. Thank you. I dreamt I was 52 and I wasn't married. Were you dreaming in documentary form? <laughs> <laughs> that is not funny. Really? I thought it was. You are 52 and you aren't married. And whose fault is that? Is the answer supposed to be me? <clears throat> I don't... There, there isn't any answer. And if I pine for you, that is my business. Don't pine for me, that's ridiculous. I'm 57, and I've told you for many years, I'm not interested in you in that way. But couldn't you at least give it a try? Listen, you're my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I am your adopted sister. We are not blood relations, so I can pine if I want to. Listen, I think your pining after me is a tired reflex. 
I don't think you even like me anymore. <laughs> it's a reflex for being out. We'll come to my living together after Masha moved away and mother and father died and Masha was off gallivanting, having a life. Do you ever get angry at Masha that she's had a life? Yes, I do. But it's too late to do anything about it. I must say, I've always admired how you've taken care of our elderly parents even though you were adopted. You put Masha to shame, in my opinion. Why, thank you. I appreciate that. Of course, she has a successful acting career, and you basically didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, a moment ago, you had just given me a perfectly lovely compliment. And now you're just let's not talk. I will keep my sadness to myself. All right, you do that. It's been our cross to bear that our parents gave us names from Chekhov plays. Such was the burden of having to profess our parents and so actively involved in community theater as well. Remember how good they were in your reluctant debutante? I didn't think they were very good in the war at Staya, though. Did you? Neither do I. And father, he'd get so angry with us when we didn't know something. Got enraged when I didn't know who wrote the imaginary invalid. Screamed at the top of his lungs when I said, Neil Simon. <laughs> <laughs> then I was seven. And the award was very, very difficult when they went mental in their old age. Mother was so elegant, and father showed affection for me often. He called me his little artichoke. <laughs> and he liked artichoke, so it was probably a good thing he called you that. <laughs> I think so. And he never molested me. That's nice. <laughs> They were two drunken Irish people who would leave me alone every night while they went out to the pub until one night they were so bombed out of their minds that they walked off a cliff. Do you have any nice fantasies about who your parents were? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> debating whether to go microwave, mi microwave it or not. You want me to? Would you? That would be very kind of you. <laughs> Is this how you're going to be today? I have to do everything. But you offered to take it. Are you bipolar now? Yes. <laughs> Some people claim antidepressants help. Uh, if, anti if everyone took antidepressants, Chekhov would have had nothing to write down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting those up yet. 
Me either. Well, obviously there's no solution. The housemaid comes to later today. We'll have her clean them up. And what if she refuses? We'll fire her. All right. We'll never ever pick the cuffs up. And instead, we'll sell the house. Uh-uh. You can't sell it. You don't own it. Masha owns it. I know Masha owns the house, but if we leave the broken cups and coffee spells all over the house, I'm sure she'll decide we have to sell it. And you and I can finally live separately since we hate each other. What a good idea. A very good idea. <laughs> it's nice to have a pawn to look at. I do too. I think a blue heron as a good omen. Of course, it eats frogs, so it's not a good omen for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nature is cruel, but for some reason I think the blue heron is a harbinger of good luck. 